everybody on Instagram. We are just going to get started in a few seconds. I'm loading up Facebook. Um, sorry if you are looking up our nose on Instagram. Hello, Facebook. Um, thank you guys all for tuning in. Um, so today, I, I thank you. I, my name is Lindsay Cuyava. This is part of Re Theater's live stream theater summer series, or not the summer, we changed that this year. Um, it's a year long summer series, or year long series. I need to. Okay, this is part of Re Theater's year long monthly series where we bring artists to you live to do free education, to talk about some interesting, awesome topics. And today we are going to be talking about how to create your own art at any age because it's such an important topic, especially for young people. Um, and I'm super, super excited to have my guest Lucas with me today. Um, my name is Lindsay Cuyava. I'm the founder of Re Theater. Re Theater is a theater education and consulting company whose goal is to inspire educators, young people, and communities to deeply engage with difficult storytelling that goes beyond the black and white so that they are able to be transformed by the gray areas that live within. We are all about empowering people to tell those stories that maybe they sometimes aren't sure should be told and giving them tools to do it because we need these stories out there. Um, so great, so thank you all for tuning in. Um, Lucas, I could you introduce yourself to the group? I'm yeah. terrible at intros, so yeah. yeah. My name is Lucas Poishbeg. I use uh, he, him, his pronouns, uh, and I am a senior at the University of Washington right now. Uh, I am a Seattle theater artist, uh, a uh, uh, teaching artist mm -hmm. here in Seattle and up north and down south. And um, I'm a tech enthusiast and yeah. um, a vegan and so many other things. Amazing. I yeah. love this. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, actually, I had no idea that you were a tech enthusiast until yeah. I posted. I was looking for a sound designer and you're like, hey, I do that. I'm like, what? You do? That's so crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this conversation has been a long time coming and gone through a lot of different um, ideas. I'm so, so excited to have you here yeah, today. Thank you. Um, so the main reason, uh, Lucas, that I wanted you to come on was to talk about um, young people creating their own opportunities and their own art. Um, this is something that you've done. Um, but before we jump into that, um, I think it's really important for us to understand what theater means to you and why yeah. you do it to get a better grasp at what you did. So I guess, what does theater mean to you? And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I started theater uh, in the first grade. Wow. Uh, I was in Once Upon a Lily Pad as Freddy. Amazing. Right? So fun. <laughs> no, um, I had some great um, artists and mentors in um, elementary school and in choir and uh, really started to... Um, explore what theater meant uh -huh. and I loved every single um, aspect of theater. Mm. The sound, lights, scenery, making props out of um, fabric yeah. and this and that. Um, and so I really started to fall um, in love with this idea of theater. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as soon as I reached middle school, I was very fortunate to have a strong theater program oh, and some yes. really um, influential mentors, mm -hmm. um, Emily Swanby. Um, and uh, I learned even more things and we had uh, microphones and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. scenery that was amazing and, yes. and uh, all sorts of things that matched a... Uh, uh, professional theater mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, environment. So I fell in love with uh, creating and just making things happen yeah. for fun and singing and acting and um, all this other stuff. And then I found uh, Kid Stage at age 11 and there I was met with uh, such a safe and supportive environment. Mm -hmm. Not only to make theater happen, mm -hmm. but to find my own identity and to express myself through art because I mm. was never really super into reading books or okay. writing, science, other stuff like that. And so I turned towards theater um, as my sort of outlet to yeah. create and just be myself. So. Theater has uh, been a um, support for me to 
find out my strengths, my um, uh, pitfalls, both mm -hmm. as an artist and as a human, as a person. So I am very fortunate to have had um, a lot of mentors yeah. and a lot of uh, supportive people to help me um, through both really awesome times mm -hmm. and really rough times. That's super yeah. fortunate. I think that that's one thing um, as theater educators that we get to do that maybe other um, disciplines don't is we get to like provide these spaces for young people to really, um, I always used to say to my students, like if you're gonna mess up and if you're gonna fail, please do it here because we can, this is an environment where you're allowed to make mistakes. I mean, the whole premise behind theater, right, is like yeah. make bold choices yep. and figure things out. Yeah. Um, so that's, I love to hear that you had this space and these opportunities to grow yeah. um, and figure out who you were. And yeah. so then I guess did those experiences then inform like the kind of art that you gravitate towards now or what you create? Yeah, yeah. Um... As I mentioned earlier, this safe and supportive environment that I had mm -hmm. was something that I wanted to be able to provide to others, okay. regardless of the theater that they're at mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. support that they have, just uh, creating these safe and supportive spaces yeah. to make art and really to have um, other people find their own... Um, strengths and their own pitfalls as I did. Awesome. Yeah. And so that's kind of, so I guess then transitioning a little bit into the next topic, which is what you create and yeah. why. Yeah. Um, would you say that that idea of creating a safe space and that foundation is the, like kind of where everything starts for you as far as a, a creator? Yeah. Yeah. And I love to create opportunities for other people. Uh -huh. Right. And I, and of course, I like to create um, uh, opportunities for myself as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, I love seeing other people have a start and a finish and mm -hmm. have growth in that. And I think that's why I gravitated towards becoming a uh, artist and uh, specifically a, a teaching artist mm -hmm. because I am am able to guide others in that journey. Yeah. So through this um, uh, cabaret that I uh, created and um, made up, yeah. I really wanted to showcase others and allow them to choose songs that they wanted to sing and not from um, a show that they were cast in or that they um, had to choose per se totally. because of type or size or range, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. um, allowing them to choose art material that they wanted to do and then adding in that safe and supportive environment mm -hmm. so that they felt comfortable to make this art. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Okay. So you kind of already like teased a little bit what it is you do. Yeah. So we're going to start getting into more, um, like the, the system of which like Lucas used to create everything. So yeah. if you're tuning in and you're hearing things that you're like, Oh my gosh, I love this. Go ahead and give a thumbs up or hearts or whatever you want to do. But if you have questions, we really, really want to hear from you. So just type those in. If I turn my head really silly, <laughs> it's because, um, we have my phone up here because we're also on Instagram. Um, so I'm reading things that way as well. Um, but we really want, uh, the goal of this is to kind of give young people and even educators an idea of how, um, you can support student-driven work within your community um, and how to create that because as we'll get into it's a really great way for students to take ownership but also to create art that's really relevant to them that sometimes um, we just have to face that like I'm I'm out of the age range of young people at this yeah. point and I don't know all the things that they're dealing with and I want to support them though in that journey. And so finding ways to support our young people to find their voice is really important because if they don't, then we don't have artists, then we won't have shows and that would just be so sad, which don't worry, that won't happen. No. Theater's been around for thousands <laughs> of years. Um, but yeah, so cool. Okay, so Lucas. Yeah. Talk to so you. So the first thing that you produced was this cabaret, correct? Yeah. Okay, can you kind of just walk us through like, why, like, how did you get to that point? And yeah. then what the cabaret itself was, like, what was the point of it? Yeah, well, I'll uh, 
start a little bit further back. Great. Um, Village Theater has an event called Sing It Forward, yes. which raises money for all of their youth education programs. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And I uh, started in the second year um, that they did Sing It Forward as an assistant stage manager. Oh, okay, cool. Just kind of helping in yeah. on the project. And then after that, I was a cast member and then I started to choreograph. So, oh, fantastic. So I fell in love with this um, idea of just a cabaret, right? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't too sure of what that was before I was met with this yeah. Sing It Forward uh, event. So what is cab a cabaret? Because I think yeah. that people have a lot of different ideas of what this means. So to you, yeah. what does that mean and how did, like, what, that, what you created, I yeah. guess, the foundation? Uh, to me, it's just a showcase, whether that's songs, mm -hmm. Um, spoken word, dance, whatever. Yeah. Just a big showcase of art. Okay. Yeah. Great. Awesome. I love that definition. It doesn't have anything necessarily to do with the musical cabaret. I know I've said that to a couple of educators and they're like, yeah. ooh, I can't do a cabaret <laughs> at my school, which actually you can, but that's another conversation. Um, uh, so, okay, cool. So it's like just a showcase of art. There's not really a, a through line, is there? Or uh, like a theme, is there? It can. Okay, right? great. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. So this is a cabaret, this idea. So then, so you helped with the Village Theater's kind of mm -hmm. version of this. Yeah. And you helped stage manage and then you went to choreograph and all this. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the fall of 2016, mm -hmm. uh, I had researched a little bit and I had found the, uh, the uh, pocket theater in mm, yes. uh, Greenwood and they... Uh, front the bill for shows that want to perform or mm -hmm. groups, artists, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I was like, cool, an opportunity to do an event yeah. where uh, they sort of handle all of the tickets and the upfront costs mm -hmm. um, and see what can happen. So um, I started to plan that out and we'll chat more about the process. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, I had reached a point about a month in, um, I had kind of reached out to people and um, had started to brainstorm some times that would work, mm -hmm. dates in the future, and unfortunately I just started to get more work in the spring, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so I just had to email the folks at the pocket and say, now is not the right time yeah. for this mm -hmm. event. Um, which was sad a little bit, totally. but thankfully I had done a lot of work on it yeah. and still had a strong uh, bond with the folks at The Pocket yeah. so that um, in June of 2017, when uh -huh. um, I was able to partner with Foundry 10, mm -hmm. who are a research-based um, LLC. Yeah, which uh, if you are not from the Seattle area or even if you are, Please, if you're an educator, go look this group up because they do absolutely crazy research that's so, so important to the arts community. Yeah. They're amazing. Check them out. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> so um, I had uh, uh, partnered with Foundry 10 and they uh, wanted to work with me on this awesome. event. Yeah. So um, I spent about a month and a half doing more research, mm -hmm. working with other artists, um, reaching out to folks um, about this event, students that I had known. Um, we had did the uh, event on uh, TPS mm. to bring in folks that we didn't know yeah, yeah. so that it uh, uh, didn't become this event of folks who had already mm. had opportunities, mm -hmm, right? So mm -hmm. we wanted to really break it out mm -hmm. um, and we had just two rehearsals and then we had um, tech day of and a performance and then we had a second performance at um, a venue in uh, Ballard so oh, awesome. yeah yeah so it was a two-night performance oh, I love this okay yeah. so um great so then I guess what 
I mean, you already kind of mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Like you like to give people opportunities yeah. and you wanted to give people a freedom to like explore these different ideas. Was there any, was there a theme to this cabaret or yeah. like a major drive that was like, I have to produce this work because blank? Yeah. So, um, it was called the spark of creation cabaret, mm, okay. which I am drawn to that song from children oh, of Eden, of spark course, of creation. Of course, of course. Um, and so I had loved that theme of igniting the minds and the hearts of our audiences. Yeah. I so, love this. um, the, uh, uh, sort of tagline was the spark of creation cabaret featuring young artists and their stories. Okay. To ignite the minds, minds and hearts of our audiences. Awesome. And yeah. so then, did the was were the performers tasked with finding work that then fit that mold? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, had them submit three songs okay. that they wanted to sing uh, to us, both myself, our stage manager, and um, uh, Aaron Norman, okay. our. Uh, vocal coach on the project sure. and um, Aaron and I chatted back and forth of does this song fit in the theme and we actually waited until we got everyone's choices to see mm. what things would change. Totally. So we didn't just pick someone's uh, top choice okay. out of their three because it fit the mold. We uh, saw some sort of an arc and then at the like first that rehearsal, we sang through all of the songs, and we didn't have um, an order for the show until after the second rehearsal. Okay. So then us as a team sat mm -hmm. down and said, okay, what's going to work? What's going to make sense? Do we need a fast song here to break up the pace, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. is most of the meat or the um, heart at the yeah. end, at the beginning, right? So we chatted through that. Okay. Yeah, based on what the students had sent us. I like that you uh, allowed the students to give you options. I mean, first of all, I'm all about student choice. Like, yeah. the, lot, the more we do that, it's so important. But yeah. I also like it from a like practical planning standpoint, that takes a lot of the pressure yeah. off of you to make yep. me like, do I have enough soprano songs or enough alto? Like, yep. for all the different parts. Yeah, I think that's sure. a really efficient way to put something like this together with less effort needed on your end to coordinate so many different moving parts. Yeah. I love that. And so then, um, I guess this is just me being really just nosy. Um, when you, when the students selected the material, did they have to tell you why? Mm, they, uh, I can't remember, but, um, if none of their song choices fit, uh -huh. we would ask them to explain oh, why okay. they were drawn to a specific piece and okay. that would um, influence our choice. Awesome. Yeah. That's super great. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, because I think sometimes, like, as creators, like, we have a very specific idea mm -hmm. and then sometimes, like, kids will, like, throw, like, a random, so it's, like, out of left field, like, wait, what the heck is that? Yeah. But I think allowing them to explain is really interesting because yeah. sometimes you can be like, I didn't even think of it from that point of view. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay, so I love this. I'm super, super excited. So, okay, so now we have a kind of an idea of what Lucas created. So now what we're going to switch into is actually the, like, steps. And, again, yeah. this is a very quick thing. Um, there will be lots more information on this coming up. Um, but w can you walk us quickly through... What are the steps that somebody needs to take to create this kind of opportunity? Yeah. Yeah. Um, first off, just brainstorming, right? If I had all of the money in the <laughs> world, what would I love to create? Whether it's a full-scale musical right. on Village Theater main stage, right? Yeah. Just brainstorming ideas, small ones, big ones, because as soon as you start to wind down, okay, what's maybe... Um, actually achievable, looking mm -hmm. at your uh, timeline, if you're starting research or something in May and you want to do something in August, just thinking about what from the outside looks looks achievable. And yeah. maybe that's two or three options, it's not mm -hmm. just one, unless you're totally sold <laughs> on, I want this, I want this as the name, and there's 30 students in it, and there's all, yeah. So, and then out of those big sort of ideas, finding smaller um, goals in okay. those. So um, I want at least 15 students, or, sure. or um, I want both singing pieces, spoken word pieces, mm. dance pieces, right? Mm -hmm, Just mm -hmm. um, 
just thinking large scale. Um, what am I excited about? Mm -hmm. What in a perfect world would I love to do? Um, and then get um, organized, maybe okay. write those things down, yeah. type them out, and start to um, recruit people. Say, say, hey, um, if I were to do this event, yeah. would you be um, interested in performing in it or yeah. working on it? Just seeing what folks are excited about, especially if you have two or three options, because okay. that'll just yeah. uh, help inform, oh, no one's really excited to do this 30 minute um, romp in the park, right? Yeah. <laughs> and right, then right. start to cut that idea yeah. out, yeah. And then after that, start to um, research okay. and, and pull in resources. If yeah. you're like, I want to do this event, but I need a lot of money. Think about how can we cut costs in an effective way, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, think about um, researching arts organizations that love to partner with students. That's an easy search on um, any search yeah. platform. Yeah. Seattle student yeah. seeks art, yeah. <laughs> whatever, right? Right, right. And just start to pull in and then write some emails, meet with people. Maybe you have a mentor that's mm -hmm. really great and you're like, hey, so-and-so, I really want to make this event happen. Do you have any friends in your circle that um, have done this in the past or mm -hmm. like to work with young artists? Just totally. reaching out and researching, calling people on the phone, yeah, but yes. a really broad scale. I love that. Okay, I love yeah. this because so even if you don't live in a metropolitan city, um, I know a lot of people, oh, maybe our broadcast is not working on Facebook right now. Um, oh. uh, even if you don't have a huge uh, network within your smaller community, I can guarantee you there are people that want to work with you. Um, it might not be like, you might not be able to Google search exactly who, um, but you can find that out uh, if you just um, look for different venue options. So somewhere that I've used a lot would be um, just different like coffee shops. Yeah. And uh, I've been asked like, there's a lot of public parks that you can perform in. Yeah. Um, that's what I started when I started doing my own work um, in a small town. So I love this and I like the, that you mentioned being organized. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing, if I can give you any, any advice as far as how to make this work, it would be that you need to be organized, especially as a young person, because people are not gonna take you seriously if you just come in and are like, I want to do this musical. You have to have actionable mm -hmm. items that you can check off of a list yeah. and you have to come in professional. Like people are not going to give this to you. They're, yeah. they're going to be so much more like standoffish with this idea. Um, when you are doing this from as a, as a young person, as, mm -hmm. as, an, as opposed to an adult, yeah. which we don't need to talk about that. It's stupid yeah. because young people are awesome <laughs> and produce really great work. So I would just say looking, being really, really organized and going to like your local theater communities, going to your coffee shops and all that. And I like the idea too that you said about feeling people out. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you can think you have a really good idea, right? But then nobody else wants to do it. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So once you got that far, yeah. what was the next steps actually like getting this up? Yeah, I did a simultaneous uh, looking for venues mm -hmm. and reaching out to people that I knew. And in reaching out to people, I, I said at the very bottom, please send this message to your friends or um, anyone in your um, social circle that might be um, interested as well. And then I put my um, email down. Awesome. So, so I... Um, really reached out to the people that I knew and mm -hmm. had been a little bit interested but wanted more information. Okay. So now that I had a little bit more, I reached out again. Okay. And then I secured venues. Mm. And that's when I did the big push of okay. here's the rehearsal dates, whether that's um, in a park, whether that's um, at your vocal coach's house and yeah. you have to do structured things like that but just saying here are the dates mm -hmm. here's this and that 
are you on board, right? Yes. Because at that point, it's like... Yeah, you have to get nothing. that commitment, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. At some point, people have to say, yes, I'm on board. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So then at that point, um, it took about two or three weeks to really gather people. Um, I would call them on the phone. I would get a confirmed yes. Because some folks wouldn't respond back, <laughs> as always. Yes. You know, this happens. I would text them. I would see them in person and be like, hey, will you send me a message back? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, we uh, sent out an um, email blast and we closed off submissions. Okay. And I say submissions because we didn't have auditions. We knew that we oh, would accept right. okay. anyone that wanted to come in. Oh. And that's also why we had them choose their own material because we weren't aware whether they were a belter, an alto, a oh, bass, whatever. So sense. we wanted them to send us something that they thought they could do so yeah. that we could help them and so that Aaron Norman, our vocal coach, again, could help them on that journey. I love that, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then after that, we um, really had a push to, to advertise our um, event. So the next step is to market, mm -hmm. advertise, and socialize. And I say <laughs> I like that. those yes. <laughs> three things because Marketing and advertising are two of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. And socializing, people love word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, a printed letter. In this day and age, sending um, a photo blast on your Instagram or your Facebook can only go so far, right? Because right. everybody's doing yep. that. So whether that's creating a 30-second video of a rehearsal and you have an opening number and they're singing the last 32 bars, yeah. right? Or um, walking up to um, folks at an um, event in your town, mm -hmm. at um, a school dance, asking your um, teachers or your principal, hey, am I able to stick up this poster yeah. that I made? Um, and it's really simple to create quality artwork and um, advertising yeah. through word, through publisher. Yeah. Like, you do not need to hire no. somebody to create your art. And it's even better if a student in the cast is like, ooh, I'm an artist, I would yes. love to draw something for you. Totally. And then you photocopy that, add some yeah. print on it, and boom, send right. it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so market... Advertise, and socialize. And socialize. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's so... I, I love that you said, like, you can only do so much by putting a picture out because everybody yeah. is doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it is time, guys. I mean, I know, like, I also hate calling people on the phone. Like, I hate <laughs> those things as well. But we need to start doing them um, because that's how we stand out. And I think that's so, so awesome mm -hmm. that you were encouraging your your folks to do that and that you were doing that yourself because yeah, you can't just make a Facebook event and you can't just, you got to reach out to people. Um, the other things you mentioned, like great resources, to, like make your own marketing material. There's also a really great app called Canva mm -hmm. um, yeah. that I use that like makes it look like I'm sending a lot of money <laughs> on a social media manager. Yep. I'm not. I don't have that kind of money, um, uh, uh, but it's it's really really great. They have a bunch of templates that you can use. Yeah. There's no reason that like if you are putting blasts out that they should look like unprofessional because there's all these tools at your disposal for yeah. your use. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we have just a few minutes. Like, what yeah. are is there any last steps that they yeah. need to make sure that they? Yeah. Do, do, do. Um, once again, always making sure that you are organized, mm -hmm. whether that's having a Google Drive folder oh, that's yes. shared with your. Uh, team or fellow members, um, just making sure that you're uh, answering questions mm -hmm. in a timely manner from yeah. your vendors, from um, students in the cast, and also creating that safe and supportive environment, which I know that Kate um, yeah. chatted beautifully on, um, but just... Um, Allowing that space for yourself mm -hmm. to be vulnerable and for yeah. others to be um, as well. Because sharing stories through song mm -hmm. um, is a great way to really express yourself. Mm -hmm. But it can also just be this showcase of folks singing right. really awesomely. Yeah, which is yeah. Like it's also fine. Yeah. Cool too. Yeah. And then 
um, just have the time of your life, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you're the host at this event, whether you're singing at it, whether you're just standing in the background, watching, stressed over time, right? Because mm -hmm. everyone's talking too much. Um, <laughs> just um, enjoy that you created whatever's yes. up there, um, whether it's at a park, this and that, even the fact of just bringing students together with a karaoke track and five people is amazing, right? Yes. Because yeah. you allowed that space for students to mm -hmm. share some art and you maybe uh, had the opportunity to inspire five people. Yeah. Right? yeah, I love that. I love, love, love that last piece of just enjoy your time. Like, yeah. don't stress. There's plenty of time in the world to stress, but yep. in that moment, just totally yeah. immerse yourself. Um, that was awesome. That was so much like quality. Like you could like put that as a checklist. <laughs> I love it. So actually we're going to make a checklist and put it up on the re-theater website under our free resources and materials. Um, that will probably take us like a few weeks or so, but we will have that available, um, to you if you want to work on creating your own cabaret. And as Lucas had said earlier, um, reaching out to mentors, to people who have done this, if you don't know people who have done this, you can reach out to Re Theater and we are happy to connect you with Lucas. I've done a lot of this. Most of our instructors also have. So we also want to be a support system for people who are in rural communities, maybe who don't have access, like they don't have a drama teacher, they don't have this, but they want to create this. Mm -hmm. We want to help you make sure that you're able to do that. So we are definitely a resource. Um, great. So Lucas, as we wrap up, do you have any last words of like, like power empowerment or anything to people who yeah. want to do this or you like just even or even young people doing the arts in general yeah there are resources everywhere awesome. schools <laughs> have um a lot of clubs mm -hmm. um and they um often have resources and money all over the place but yeah. never in the right place <laughs> so yes. you really have to do your work because this um, type of art can happen anywhere yeah. and reaching out is scary yes it's hard especially as a young artist mm -hmm. reaching out to folks that are um, older than you or maybe have more experience in the theater world so just accepting the fact staying organized and saying here's what I would love to do here's what I need mm. and here's what I want right so yes. at the bare minimum I need this but if you could support me I want or I would love to do this and it's possible anywhere in any state to just bring fellow classmates fellow artists together and create something yes yeah Oh my gosh, I love that, like, the last thing you just said about this is what I need, but this is what I want, and this is how you can help me. Yeah. So giving them that opportunity to step up and do even more. Yeah. Lucas, this has been awesome! <laughs> I'm so glad that you joined me today. This yeah, has been you. so informational. If people want to learn more about, like, what you're doing or yeah. um, the projects that you're working on, is there any way that they can keep in touch with you? Yeah, uh, my website is www.lukas. P O I S C H B E G dot com. Awesome. Yeah. Great. So go and check Lucas out there if you want to get in contact. I assume you have like a people can ask you questions. Like, a oh, yeah. Form. Yep, of course. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Great. If you also are, uh, if you like forget about that and you want to get a hold of Lucas, you can reach out to us. We will put you into contact with him as cool. well. Um, yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. If you're watching this on replay and you have questions, go ahead. Just type them in the comment box and we'll make sure we get back to you on that. Um, again, as I said, we do this every month. Next month, we are joining with Dante Felder, who is a Seattle educator who puts on awesome student um, created work. And he's going to talk about why it's important as educators for us to do this work and why we need to stop being so scared of selling tickets because you can do it. Um, so I'm really excited about that. We also have a bunch of other free education programs going on this summer. We are running a summer series um, of a bunch of different classes. So right now we have a class on dramaturgy called The Why, which is helping educators get really clear on why they're selecting shows and then helping them be able to pitch them to administration, how to create a marketing plan, just how to have a really clear um, idea and vision with what you're doing. Um, we also have a class called the Casting, Understanding Casting and Show Ethics in 2018, which is 
so important. Um, I cannot overemphasize it. Um, that class actually meets on Thursday, so if you're watching and you want to tune into that, just send us a DM and we'll get you signed up for it. And then we also have musical theater history class that we have two more coming up in August. So bleh, that's all the information. If you want to join and do more, just follow us on social media or go to our website to find out more information. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks again to you, yeah, Lucas. Of course. Thank you. And we will see you guys next month. All right, bye. Bye. And. Bye 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 bye. This too. And.